Hi, I'm Kevin Darty, Education Director of the Illinois Ag in the Classroom Program, here with another episode of Beyond the Barn Door, where we're going to take a look at some of the things involving agriculture you might not think about. Last week, we talked about harvest, specifically how combines move through fields and harvest the grain. It's been a hot, dry week through most of Illinois this week, and harvest is well underway. In fact, early predictions predictions showed that Illinois should harvest around 15.2 billion bushels of corn this year. That's up 11% over last year. And over 4.06 billion bushels of soybeans, up over 3% over last year. That's a lot of stuff. Now, what you get all this stuff, billions and billions of bushels of grain, where are we going to store it? Well, some common places to store grain are are silos, bins, and elevators. And we're gonna talk about those three. First off, what the difference is. A silo. A silo comes from the Greek word that means a pit to store grain. So it's been around for a long time. Today, you would typically find a silo as a tall, skinny structure, and it holds moisture. It's airtight. So it's going to hold moisture in, and we're going to, it's gonna keep things wet if you ever keep put something into a, a Ziploc bag, you can see how things can happen in there. That's a silo, tall, skinny structures. Typically now you'll see silos on dairy farms where it's holding silage or food for our dairy cattle who are ruminant animals that can digest that because they burp up and they eat their cud. That's okay. Typically you see a lot of bins. Across central Illinois and across all of Illinois, you'll see corrugated or wavy metal silver round things. Those are bins, grain bins, and those are vented so the air gets in and it circulates and it helps dry things out. So it's a good place to store drying grains corn, soybeans, oats, wheat. So we typically have those things. So we have silos and we have bins. You'll also see elevators, and those are those tall cement structures you see all across Illinois. In fact, there are over 1,080 elevators across Illinois. Our elevators go back to 1827, specifically in the Buffalo, New York area. Buffalo, New York was on the Erie Canal, and they were trying to find a way. They had all sorts of grain coming in off the Erie Canal, and they needed a place to store it. This grain was typically housed and moved two or three multiple times on the backs of men because labor was cheap and plentiful. They wanted to find a way to store it, and that's where a man by the name of Joseph Dart was trying to replace a storage mechanism and a movement mechanism. That's where he built this large thing with big buckets that would move it up and then move it over to grain bins where we would store it. Typically in Illinois, you see grain elevators that have easy access to railroads, highways, or rivers. Again, there's over 1,082 in Illinois, and they're highly regulated. In fact, the state of Illinois has something that's called the Grain Code, because what happens is, is farmers will deliver their grain to an elevator where they'll either sell it or they'll store it. Imagine taking something that you worked really hard on and then giving it to someone else for safekeeping. What would happen if they would lose it? Think about your homework or something like that. You'd be the one in trouble. Illinois regulates that just like they regulate banks to make sure that the farmer's grain is protected. Other places that we can store our grain this year would be on farm. Farmers typically have silos if they have grain, if they have uh, dairy cattle, but they'll also have bins to store their grain. But again, with those 15.2 billion bushels of corn and 4.06 billion bushels of soybeans, that's a lot of room for storage. So they'll typically house some of it on the farm in bins, but they also take it to elevators or they could take it to a processor. Depends on where they're at. The people that take the corn and beans and they crush it into oils and proteins that, that can be used for other instances. Processors or even ethanol plants where they can take corn and turn it into gasoline to be used in automobiles. So all those grain things that are being harvested out of fields will be stored somewhere and turned into something that you can use either as animal feed or gasoline for your cars or other byproducts. Hope you've learned a little bit more beyond the barn door. We'll see you soon.